All right, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, being I am. Well. <laughs> I am not actually in my kitchen today because I actually have the studio available. So we get a fancy background. Oh, wait, I should turn on my light. So yeah. welcome, Peter. Um, usually we do introductions. People, I guess they know me. I'm the video person at Flat at IO. Yeah. Um, um, can, yeah, tell us about yourself, Peter. I'm Peter. I work at Fly, obviously, um, <laughs> on the infrastructure team. And I think I somehow became the network person on the, in on the infra team for whatever reason. Today, we're going to be talking about networking at Fly. I think one of the big appeals of Fly.io is the fact that we can route requests to the closest version of your app. And uh, how that actually works is really interesting. It's just effectively how edge routing works. And mm -hmm. what I think is fascinating is that a lot of it just has to do with how the internet works as yeah. a baseline. Let's say I have a Fly app and I've got it in three different regions, like Seattle, Tokyo, and Singapore or something. If I have a user in Osaka and they make a request to my app, how is it that Fly is able to route that to the closest Tokyo instance? There are a few things that need to happen, right? So firstly, the request from Osaka needs to first reach an edge node. That's what we call at Fly. That's a bunch of servers whose, whose sole job is to route requests from the internet to, to one of your machines in your app. Mm -hmm. Once it reaches the, the edge in Tokyo, then we do a bunch of magic to figure out that the closest instance of your app is actually in Tokyo. There's actually a lot of like assumptions that goes into the first part, which is why does your request go to Tokyo in the first place? Why doesn't mm -hmm. it go to like Hong Kong, Singapore, yeah. or all the way to the US? And that part is like basically how the internet works. So, yeah. okay. So in a typical web hosting situation, web developers learn that you have a server that's located in a place. And I'm just talking in yeah. just traditional senses. You have a server yeah. and it's in this place over here. I'm trying very hard not to hit my mic. And yeah. it's got an IP address and yeah. you have your domain.com and then you point that domain to this one IP. And so, yeah. you know, all the, the DNS servers know like, okay, this domain needs to get sent to this IP, that yeah. one IP. But how does it work if you've got this, like the same server in a bunch of different places. Like how do we know to get to Tokyo in the first place? Like yeah. how does that on a DNS yeah. level work? It's actually not on the DNS level, but it's like on a lower level. Yes, if you have a domain and now you have resolved the thing to an IP address, but it's still just a number. How do I like even get to that number, right? Like, like let's not even consider fly here. Like let let's just say that I have an IP address and I, and I would like others on the internet to be able to reach this IP address. How would I tell all the other computers that I exist? That's where BGP comes into play. So BGP is short for border gateway protocol. And in that case, it's mostly run between routers of different, let's say, internet providers or ISPs mm -hmm. on a very, very high level, what BGP even is. It's basically a thing for different carriers and server providers and whatnot to exchange information. And the information that is exchanged is actually the IP ranges that yes. you can reach through that router that's currently running BGP. Whenever two networks connect to each other through a pair of border routers, like it's the two networks themselves that are responsible for pushing out what IPs are reachable through them to the other side. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, so if I've got a new IP address somewhere and I want to make sure that the internet knows about it, I will broadcast that out. And then it eventually that sort of trickles out to all the routers. Is that correct? That is the next complication here. So the way that this works is that during that exchange that we just talked about, they don't actually only push out IPs that they own, but it also includes IPs and technically it's routes, but let's say mm -hmm. IPs, well, they might choose to, to also send over routes, learn from their other peers. 
will so every single IP that that a router pushes out will be tagged with a thing called AS path. So AS mm. is an autonomous system. Let's say mm -hmm. that it map it maps to a to a carrier. So it tags that with the with the full AS path that starts from the origin. So if an origin AS has a router that sends out the route of an a of an IP to one of its peers, then that peer would attach the AS number of itself on that IP again, mm -hmm. and then send this route to all of its peers. And that's yeah. basically what the internet is. It's just the assumption that any route you push out will eventually end up mostly everywhere. Known by most of the routers, right? Yes. So it's, I think of it as a trail of breadcrumbs. Okay, first I went to this, this, AS, and then I went to this yeah. AS, and then I went to this AS. And so every router has these lists of routes where it keeps track of how to get to every, all of these IP ranges. Yeah. In the case of having multiple servers, how does that work? Yeah. Do they have different IP? I know the answer to this, but do they have, if you have multiple instances of your app, are we dealing with different IP addresses or is it the same IP? So, I mean, that's where any cast comes in. So the idea of any cast is that multiple servers can share the same IP address, or at least they can appear as the same IP address to a bunch of clients. So how does this work? When we say any cast, I think a lot of people may not know what that is at all. So is it a special kind of IP? Is it a protocol? How would you describe any cast and yeah. how does it work? So here's the catch. Anycast is fake. It doesn't <laughs> exist. It doesn't exist. It's a mindset. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, if you it. look into the BGP protocol, there's nothing there that says mm -hmm. I have a special kind of IP that's called Anycast. It doesn't yes. care. So we have just mentioned that if a BGP router receives routing information, at the same time from a bunch of different peers, then there are a set of criteria to resolve that route down to just one canonical route. But here's the thing. No one said these routes need to originate from the same place. It would work exactly the same if, say, I just have multiple servers or routers announcing the same mm -hmm. IP to a bunch of different peers at different locations, it doesn't matter, receives multiple of these routes, it has no idea that they actually came from different places. So right. it would still y use the same set of criteria to resolve it down to one route that it would take canonically. Well, okay, so let me see if I understand this. Yeah. With any cast, if we're talking about the same IP being announced from, from different places, then it would almost be like a given router might have multiple routes to the exact same IP address. Yeah, and but, it, but, the, but yeah, they might be but, different lengths. They might have different hops. Yeah. But again, that, that is not special to any cast, right? Mm -hmm. It happens even if you are just announcing the IP at, the, at one location because yes. you can have multiple ISPs and those ISPs can have peers that overlap. So it's not like... It's not would, different. So... That's why I said any cast is, is fake because it, it's not, I would even say that it's like an unintended feature of the way we resolve routes on the internet. This is what blows my mind so much is that <laughs> when everyone made it sound so complicated and there's actually just, a, there's a lot less magic that's actually going on behind the scenes. And I just find that fascinating. So, okay, let's, let's bring this back to, to fly. So when I have a, we that's fine. Huge tangent. <laughs> no, this, but this is like the, the crux of it. You have to understand this yeah. stuff to understand how like the routing, which for the yeah. record, for anyone watching this, you like, you don't actually need, it's just kind of neat facts. If you're curious yeah. how behind the scenes actually works, you don't need to know, all, memorize any of this to use fly. Okay. So I've got a, a domain, I've got an app on fly and I want to point my domain mm -hmm. You're usually given one IP. The IP we give you is one of the Anycast IPs. So we send the route of that, of that IP out from every single location we have. Yeah, so 
every single location. So even if you don't have your app in these different locations, you get it, it mm. will come from all of the different regions because mm. when a request comes in, it will hit because of BGP and how the internet works. Yeah. The first request that comes in will hit those, um, what did we call them? Edge workers? Edge. So, edge. edge. Router, edges, edge, just edges. edges, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So from there, so how does it get then to my application? So let's say I'm in Osaka and I and I hit one of the edge workers in Tokyo. Conceptually, it's much simpler than than the BGP routing stuff because within Fly we have a global view of of what app and what machines these apps have. So hmm. we would just get a list of the machines. And take a look at what are the closest ones to the edge that's currently looking into this, and mm. then pick one of them because the because we would like to be able to figure out based on a bunch of criteria that's special to fly, like what machine is available and which of them are healthy, and maybe a bunch of other things that's only available as information inside the fly platform. We would like to be able to use those to make decisions on what machine actually receives. The the connection, mm -hmm. so that's why we have to do any cast on the edges and terminate all the connections on the edges, and then forward those connections based on our criteria. Well, Peter, thank you so much for chit chatting about one of my favorite subjects. Actually, I love this topic. Yeah. I, when I first learned about it, it kind of blew my mind. Thank you so much for chit chatting with me i don't i again i'm, I'm keep on trying to think about, think of an outro for one of these things i need like a little theme song or a catchphrase mm -hmm. but so far i don't have one but okay. anyways thanks so much for chatting about gp uh, bgp that's how it mm -hmm. says bgp gbp is the gb P pg <laughs> pg B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B